often and again, through God's grace, man and woman usher a child into the world and clothe him in gay colours. They cherish him, teach him as the seasons turn until his young bones strengthen, his limbs lengthen. So his father and mother first carry him, then walk with him, and lavish gifts and garments on him. Only God knows how years will use the growing child. One will die young, bringing grief to his family. The wolf, the grey heath stalker, will gorge on him. Then his mother will mourn. Man cannot control his fortune. Hunger will devour one, storm dismast another, one will be spear slain, one hacked down in battle. One will enjoy life without seeing light, he will grope about. One with feeble sinews, a crippled foot, will curse at the pain, rankled and resentful, he will fret at fate. One will drop, wingless, from the high tree in the wood. Look how he flies still, dives through the air, until the tree's arms no longer surround him. Then sadly he slumps by the trunk, robbed of life. He falls to earth, and his soul flies from him. One will have no choice but to chance remote roads, to carry his own food and leave due tracks amongst foreign people in a dangerous land. He will find few prepared to entertain him. The exile is shunned everywhere because of his misfortune. One will swing from the tall gallows, sway in death until his blood-masked body, casket of his soul, has been violated. There the raven pecks out his eyes, the dark bird rips his corpse to pieces, and he cannot thwart the vile thief's intrusion with his hands, for his life is ended. Flayed, forsaken, pale on the tree, he endures his fate, shrouded in swirling death mist. Men spit at his name. One will suffer agony on the pyre. Seething fire will swallow the fated man. Death will claim him quickly there, the cruel red flames. That woman keens who sees those tongues swathe her son. The sword's edge will shear the life of one at the mead bench. Some angry sot soaked with wine. His words were too hasty. One will not stay the cupbearer's hand and becomes befuddled. Then at the feast, he cannot control his tongue with his mind, but most meanly forfeits his life. He suffers death, severance from joys, and men style him a self-slayer and deplore that drunkard, maddened by mead. One, by God's grace, will overcome all the hardships that bedeviled his youth and achieve happiness in old age. He will welcome the rising sun, and receive riches, treasures, and the mead cup from his people, as much as anyone can own in this life. So mighty God apportions his lot to each man on this middle earth. He grants, allocates, ordains fate. For one happiness, hardship for another. For one a young man's ecstasy. Success for another in savage swordplay. For one strength in wrestling. For one skill in throwing and shooting. Fortune for one at dice. A devious mind for chess. Some scribes become wise. The goldsmith fashions a marvellous gift for one. Many times that man tempers and decorates for the great king, who grants him broad acres in return. He readily accepts them. One will delight a gathering, gladden men sitting at the mead bench over their beer. The joy of the bibbers is redoubled there. 
One will settle beside his harp at his lord's feet, be handed treasures, and always quickly pluck the strings with a plectrum. With that hard, hopping thing he creates harmonies. Harpist, heart's desire. One will tame that arrogant wild bird, the hawk on the fist, until the falcon becomes gentle. He puts jesses on it and feeds it still in fetters. He weakens the swift peregrine, so proud of its plumage, with mere morsels until that bird, servile in garment and in flight, obeys its sustainer, is trained to the hand of the young warrior. In these wondrous ways, the guardian of hosts has shaped and assigned the skills of men on this middle earth, and ordained the destiny of every man and woman in this world. Wherefore, let each of us now thank him for all that he, in his mercy, allots to men.